This video is brought to you by WorldSoccerShop.com, offering the world's largest selection of authentic jerseys and apparel for both club and country. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you the What's In My Soccer Bag video for the month of December 2014. Now for those that are unfamiliar with this series, this is where I pack an entire soccer bag full of shoes, apparel, and equipment that I found myself using most frequently throughout the previous month. Not necessarily all at the same time, but individual products that I thought were worth highlighting as being particularly good. Now of course all of the products that I'm going to be showcasing in today's video and explaining why I like them, you guys are going to be able to purchase these for yourself by checking out the what's in my soccer bag page on my website. It'll be the very first link down below in the description and if you click that it'll take you to the page where you're going to find buy it now links for all of the individual products along with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you can save yourself a little bit of money on something that you may be particularly interested in. So again, if you do see something that you like in the video, be sure to click the very first link down below in the description. All the buy it now info will be on that page. And with that being said, let's get right into the what's in my soccer bag video for December 2014. So for the month of December, obviously the weather outside was pretty cold. We did get some snow occasionally in my area and I did play outside on natural grass pretty often. Actually, I would say every single week. I also did my fair share of playing indoors, either on court surfaces as well as on artificial grass, which you guys will see uh, reflected by the actual equipment within my soccer bag. So the soccer bag that I carried around this month is actually a new one. This is the Puma Team Sport Formation Duffel Bag, size large, $49.99. Uh, retail price so it's not particularly cheap what i like about it is one it's huge so it fits absolutely everything i could want even if i'm not carrying around a lot of equipment i can have four or five soccer balls in here pretty easily um, without actually carrying a separate ball bag which is pretty nice big large compartment in the middle all the straps you could want side compartments for water and phones and stuff like that and of course i think it looks pretty cool it's got the puma branding on the front uh, with the black and white uh, kind of color scheme they have going on it's just a, a nice looking bag if you ask me so that's enough about the bag itself and move on to what is actually on the inside now, first item that I have that I've been carrying around consistently for quite a while now, these are the Storelli Body Shield Slider Shorts. These guys have a retail price of uh, $54 US, so they are fairly pricey as far as compression shorts go. You can find some that are a little bit less expensive and a lot more expensive actually. But what I like about these is one, they get the job done as far as providing that compression feel, but at the same time, you have the added benefit of extra pour-on foam padding built into either side of the shorts. It adds minimal bulk, but lots and lots of extra protection. And if you're gonna be wearing compression shorts, if you're gonna be paying $45, $50 for a pair anyways, it's worth a little bit of extra money to have that extra protection, at least in my opinion. So big fan of these, something I wear all the time. Now, as far as regular shorts go, when I was playing indoors, when it wasn't cold, um, I had these guys right here. These are the Nike PSG Home Shorts. Um, you can see they are navy blue in color, matches their home kit, obviously. PSG branding on the one side, Nike swoosh on the other. Nice, thin, dry fit material. Really nothing too fancy about them. They're just nice shorts. And of course, because it is authentic licensed apparel, it is a little bit more expensive. So these guys are gonna run you about $45 US, which is gonna be very pricey for some people, but if you want the real deal, that's the price that you have to pay. As far as training tops go, the first short sleeve training top that I wore a lot this month was actually this guy right here. This is the new Adidas Tiro 15 line. Uh, this is their new Tiro 15 jersey. It has a retail price of $39.99. So it isn't particularly cheap considering that it's not licensed. It's just a team apparel type of thing, but it looks pretty good. It's got this cool pinstriping here at the top. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. Um, it's all navy blue in color, this particular shirt. This is available in a pretty wide variety of colors, I believe. You got the V-neck collar right here with the white, the white Adidas stripes on the sleeves, of course. Uh, the little tips of the sleeves have the extra white as well. And it's a nice lightweight kind of climb -a cool material. Pretty good looking shirt. It has a nice fit to it as well. And uh, again, just a really, really nice training top if you ask me. Um, so uh, as far as long sleeve training tops go, when I was outside and it was very, very cold, I have this guy right here, which is the Adidas Tiro 15 training top. So as you guys can see, just like the training, the actual jersey, it has a very similar pattern. You're gonna find the pinstripes here around the chest area of the shirt. 
The bot from beneath that, it's kind of more plain. You have the pinstripes here on the sleeves as well. The white Adidas stripes, this has a bit of a kind of turtleneck uh, extra length to the collar and it actually does have a zipper right here down the side, which is pretty nice. You can wear it like that or it's just to make it easier to take on and off, I guess. Um, and then of course it's fully long sleeve and you have that white stripe right there at the bottom, which is kind of a signature thing of a lot of the new Tiro 15 line of apparel. This guy is going to run you uh, about $59.99. So again, it's not particularly cheap, but the quality is definitely there. And it is something that should last you a pretty long time based on how good the quality actually is. Next, I have another pair, uh, another Tiro 15 item. These are actually some pants. This is the new Tiro 15 pant that replaces the Tiro 13 pants. There isn't much of a difference, honestly. Obviously, these are the black and white color scheme, pretty straightforward. Still has the Adidas stripes going down the, the actual sides of the pants. And of course, it does taper at the bottom. The difference this year is that the material seems to be a little bit thinner, but still feels pretty good. And you guys can see at the top on the waistband, on the Tiro 13s, you only had the white stripe going across the back on the 15 it goes across the back as well as the front so a little bit different as far as visuals are concerned but at the same time very very similar these guys are going to run you about 40 to 45 dollars so they aren't particularly expensive and it's just a very useful item to have especially if you are going to be playing in cold weather plus you can wear them casually even if you're not going to be using them for training uh, so just a really nice pair of pants now also when it is cold you need to have base layers at least i do um, so i have two different base layers from under armor the first is this long sleeve compression top. This is the Evo Cold Gear uh, mock compression top. You can see it does have the mock collar right there at the top uh, just for that little bit of added warmth. And then I have the uh, UA infrared um, compression tights here. Now the, com the infrared stuff tends to be a little bit thinner and it's really, really warm in the form of these compression shorts. These run you generally around $50 or so. And of course there are going to be links on the actual what's in my bag page on my website first link down below in the description go ahead and check it out while the actual compression top here is going to run you fifty dollars and of course it's available in a couple different colorways base layers to me at least are just really really good at keeping you warm um, it's it's something that you can wear under a sweater under a training top under a jacket and it just uh, very minimal bulk but like i said lots and lots of extra warm so for me when it is really cold as it's been in december these are absolute necessities um, when it comes to staying warm while you're playing so get these out of the way move on to the next item now of course it's december so it's pretty much officially winter i would say just based on how cold it's been and when it was really really cold i actually picked up this this is the uh, chelsea, adidas chelsea padded jacket now this is essentially a winter coat that you can actually wear for soccer training because it is pretty mobile it's still a nice lightweight material it does have some padding to it um, and this jacket normally retails for 150 dollars us but actually since i bought it um, it's went down on sale to $99.99, so $50 off for 100 bucks. This is actually a really, really nice jacket. So you can see it kind of fits with the rest of Adidas's training uh, lineup, where it does have that same graphic coming in from the shoulder, the white stripes going down the sleeves, as you guys can see. Um, it does have the pockets on either side, full zip up. It's got a built-in hood as well that is fully removable. Your Chelsea branding on the front, it even says Samsung right there as their main sponsor. And this jacket, I was kind of hesitant to buy it because I know a lot of these winter coats that aren't actually marketed as winter coats tend to not be very warm, but this one really surprised me. It is extremely warm. It's got uh, just a really, really nice material on the inside. I'll kind of open it up so you guys can see it. And for whatever reason, I just found this thing to be extremely warm while playing in cold weather. So if you're looking for a nice warm jacket for around a hundred bucks, uh, one that is officially licensed apparel, a hundred dollars is really not a bad price to pay. And this is a pretty good jacket overall. So I'll move that over to the side because it takes up a lot of space. Um, as far as other cold weather specific gear that I carried around, we have a pair of gloves right here. These are the Nike Stadium uh, Barcelona themed gloves. So they're navy blue in color. You have the... Um, little Nike swoosh right here in like a goldish yellow color embroidered on the top. And then of course the palms of the gloves have the FCB Barcelona logo um, with the actual grips on there. You guys probably can't see it too well from this distance. And then you do have on the thumb as well as the index finger, this little bit of silver material that allows you to use your smartphone while you actually have the gloves on. Now these guys normally retail for around $35, but this particular variation is on sale for about $28. And of course they're available with different clubs as well as countries if Barcelona is not your team i'm honestly not too picky about that kind of thing so again 28 dollars the stadium gloves from nike pretty decent option if you're looking for a pair of soccer 
extra specific gloves that you can wear for training or of course even in games next we have the nike psg beanie uh, now this one i thought was particularly cool because it's reversible now this guy has a retail price of 29 dollars 99 so not particularly cheap as far as beanies go but again it's a an officially licensed beanie so it does have the psg branding on either side the one side is red with the blue stripes uh, as you guys can see and if you pull it the other way around you can see that the other side i actually prefer this side is that nice navy blue color you have the psg logo right there embroidered the white stripes all the way around and then on the other side it actually does have paris right in the toque which i thought was a pretty cool look um, and again this is something you can either wear for training as well as casually you guys probably actually saw me wear that toque in a couple of different videos already now as far as socks are concerned uh, regular training socks this is what i tended to wear really really am a big fan of this line of socks from nike these are the soccer um, specific stadium socks from nike they're available in full length uh, soccer socks like i have right here as well as a crew length uh, so depending on what your preference is the uh, crew length runs you about 14 dollars, whereas the full length sock is going to run you about 16. this is the hyper turquoise color so you guys saw this on the magista obra um, or just the Magista line as far as this color scheme is concerned. And of course, it does have a cool look to it. It's got the black uh, kind of arrows uh, going down the back of the calf. It's got nice padding in the foot, very high quality, the extra padding in the ankle. They're extremely comfortable sock, very seamless across the top of the foot as well, especially above the toes. So you're not going to have any issues with um, kind of just comfort, discomfort or rubbing or blistering, anything like that. And again, just really, really nice socks for everyday training. And because it was winter, normally I wear crew socks for practice. Um, I just wanted that little bit of extra warmth, so a full length sock. Even when I wasn't wearing shin guards, I just found to be ideal. So put that right there. And then, of course, true socks, uh, more or less a necessity for me nowadays. I try not to wear them too often while I'm testing out shoes because it actually does have that big of an impact on how your shoes feel and the fit of the shoe. Um, if you are looking for a great pair of socks that will make your shoes feel more responsive and prevent any kind of slippage on the inside of your shoe, True Socks really is the only product on the market that truly can achieve that feel, that sensation for you pretty much every time. They're very durable. They're pricey, $40 US, but they're totally worth the money if you're looking for the best performing sock currently out there on the market. Really, everybody who's tried these out has been extremely impressed. You rarely ever hear any complaints about True Socks, and that is for good reason. Next, as far as shin guards go, I have actually a shin guard accessory. These are the Storelli Body Shield shin guard sleeves. They're going to retail for about $36 US, which is actually very, very reasonable considering a regular pair of shin guard sleeves is going to run you around $20, $25, depending on which brand you buy. And they generally not tend to be not very good. What's great about these is that one, it's a shin guard sleeve with a built-in pocket right here on the front. And the way this actual product is designed, it doesn't have a bottom. So because it's the pocket and not an actual sleeve, it, your shin guards are never gonna fall through the bottom. So it kind of eliminates the need for tape at all, which is really, really nice. Plus, just like the Body Shield slider shorts, you get the added benefit of extra pour-on inserts running down the outside of the calf as well as the outside of the ankle. And then, of course, the inside of the ankle also has that extra padding and it's very, very low profile. I'm not a fan of any kind of bulk on my shins or my ankles while I'm playing. And uh, this is something that I wear very, very often and it doesn't bother me at all. And the extra protection is awesome, especially when you do take a shot to the ankle where normally it would hurt a lot, something like this really does help to eliminate those impact injuries that aren't necessarily going to take you out of the game, but um, can be a little bit annoying. So a really nice product if you're looking for something like that, put that right there. And as far as shin guards go, same shin guards I've been using consistently for quite a while now. These are the C6 Agility carbon fiber shin guards. My preference is the speed variation, which is slightly smaller. I know a lot of people like to ask me about that. These really are the best of the best as far as shin guards are concerned. They're made from very high quality carbon fiber, which makes them extremely lightweight. They're remarkably thin. They fit extremely well. And they're essentially a shin guard for somebody who doesn't like the feel of shin guards. They want minimal bulk, but at the same time, they don't want to lose out on protection. So like I said, best of the best as far as shin guard products go. They normally retail for $150, which is very, very expensive. Of course, they will last you an extremely long time. They're very durable as well. Um, but uh, if you use my SR4U coupon code, again, more info on the actual page, link down below in the description, you can pick these up for around 135. So save yourself a little bit of money if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself. Put that right there. Uh, soccer ball, that is of course a necessity if you're going to have a soccer bag and you're going to a soccer field. I have the Adidas Connects 15 Winter Ball colorway. 
This does not have the Women's World Cup branding on it, but this is technically the Women's World Cup ball. Um, it's a highlighter yellow color, which is nice for winter when it was snowing a little bit. You don't necessarily want to use a white soccer ball in white snow. Um, and it's essentially just a bazooka with, of course, the new Connects 15 graphics that I think look good. Uh, the bazooka is also a particularly good winter ball, in my opinion, because of the actual dimpling on the surface of the upper. It just allows for a little bit of better grip on the ball when it is snowy and very wet and dirty and uh, just not ideal conditions. So for me, a uh, big fan of the bazooka variation and on this new Connects 15 kind of colorway graphics uh, combination they got going on, I'm just a big fan of the ball in general. So I'll put that right there. As far as training shoes go, I have the uh, new Nike Zoom Structure 18s. Now this is a very interesting running shoe. It has a retail price of $120 US. Um, so not particularly expensive, not particularly cheap either. Um, and they're just very, very comfortable. It has a really nice engineered mesh upper, the fly knit, uh, sorry, not the fly knit, the fly wire uh, support system on either side. Uh, this is a more of a support running shoe, um, which um, I don't want to go into too much detail here. There is a video on my sneaker channel if you guys want to go ahead and check it out. We're going to go in more in more depth on the actual performance features of this shoe. But they're very, very comfortable. A great uh, training shoe for off the field. And even if you want to wear them casually, I think they look the part as well. So just really nice training shoes if that is something that you're looking for. Now, like I mentioned, I played indoors um, on artificial grass as well as on natural grass this, uh, this month. So when I was playing on turf indoors... Um, I actually did like to use these. These are the Adidas Free Football Crazy Quicks. Big fan of this shoe. Visually, I think it looks great. Um, I like the actual traction pattern on the bottom, although it doesn't feel too different from other turf variations that I've worn personally. Um, and it's just a really, really nice shoe. I like this new synthetic material that they've incorporated on here. Uh, they're zero tech synthetic. Um, it looks a lot like Nike skin, and to a certain extent, it is a lot like Nike skin, but it just feels really, really good. If you guys missed my video on this shoe, I'll leave an annotation on screen. Strongly recommend checking it out. Strongly recommend this shoe in general, especially since it only has an $80 retail price. You really can't go wrong. If you're looking for something like a Hyperventum Phantom at essentially a ha half or even a third of the price, depending on what you're comparing it to. So put that right here. Um, when I was playing on artificial grass, I used these. You guys probably saw me use these this month in my Smart Ball review. Uh, this is actually the uh, Adidas Predator Instinct with the AG stud variation. Big fan of the Predator Instinct. It was my second favorite shoe of the year. I'm sure you guys saw some of my, my more recent videos where I did kind of list my top 10 shoes of 2014. Uh, so definitely a no-brainer for me to pick up the Predator Instinct in the AG variation. The AG stud pattern works great on artificial grass. And the Predator Instinct is just a comfortable shoe that I'm a big fan of in terms of providing all that extra grip on the ball. There's lots of info on the Predator Instinct on my channel. So if you haven't uh, gone and checked it out, go to my channel, search Predator Instinct, and there are all kinds of videos that will pop up if you're looking for more info. And then finally, when I was playing outside on firm natural grass, that ended up being a little bit harder than usual because the ground was mostly frozen. Um, is actually this guy right here. This is the Puma King for 2014 or the latest Puma King. Um, they really didn't change the name. They just called it the Puma King. So I'm calling it the Puma King 2014. Uh, just to kind of identify it versus other models. And uh, this isn't the shoe that I was hoping for. It's not kangaroo leather. It's a calfskin leather instead. Um, and the quality of the shoe is pretty good. They're comfortable. They fit nice. Um, the stud pattern is more along the lines of what you'd expect from a traditional shoe. It just isn't anything groundbreaking. I don't think it's as exciting a shoe as what we see from the 11 Pro 3 from Adidas as well as the Tiempo Legend 5 from Nike. So for that reason, it definitely will take a third place. But the reason why I did wear it a lot this month uh, when it was really cold outside is because the upper is a little bit thicker and it's just a kind of more bulky shoe in general. And that little bit of extra padding uh, was something that I appreciated when it was very cold outside and my feet were frozen. So that's why I wore the Puma King a lot. Again, not a bad shoe. It's just one that isn't going to appeal to everybody because like I said, it's not quite as exciting as the offerings from Nike and Adidas in this particular category. So that's pretty much it as far as my What's in My Bag video is concerned for December 2014. This was the last What's in My Bag of the year. Uh, the next one will be for January 2015 in a month or so. Uh, so again, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. I know What's In My Bag is one of the more popular series on my channel, so I'm going to keep it going uh, as we uh, go into the new year. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comments section. And of course, if you guys are interested in picking up any of the items that you saw in today's video, check out the first link down below in the description. It'll take you to the What's In My Soccer Bag page on my website, and you'll find Buy It Now links for all of these items, along with the SR4U coupon codes, where you can actually pick them all up below their retail prices. So be sure to go ahead and check that out if you're interested. If you enjoy the What's In My Bag series uh, uh, videos and want to continue seeing it happen, be sure to support it with a like. That would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.